Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we're going to be looking at donated material and assets other than cash and talk a little bit about special events. This topic is covered in government and not-for-profit accounting, also covered on the CPA exam. This recording is being done summer 2019. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. Life is too short. Let's get to know each other. YouTube is where you need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in the playlist, let the world know about them. This is my Instagram account, this is my Facebook account, and I do have a website where you can get in touch with me. Also, you can donate on my website since we're talking about donation if you chose to. No, I'm not for-profit organization, but if you like my lectures and you'd like to encourage me. So today we're going to be talking about donated material and supplies. What are we talking about here? What are the materials? What are the supplies? Think about a thrift shop, okay? What do they do? They receive donation, clothing, furniture, so on and so forth. So also health agencies, they may also receive donations from pharmaceutical companies. So how should we report those, those contribution? Well, all unconditional gifts, once it's unconditional means you could use it in, in any way you would like to, it's reported at fair value. Okay, it's recorded both as a contribution, as an expense, or an expense, or as a non-cash expense. As, as we saw earlier, you debit an expense, you credit revenue for that. Okay, you might be saying, why do we do so? One more time, because we want to show how much it's costing us to run the organization. Now, how to determine the fair market value? Well, the organization can determine by the resale value, the price list, market quotation. And here they take into account the quantity and the quality of the gift when they are looking at the fair market value. Now, certain gifts, they might be harder than others. For example, used clothing. How do you find the fair value? But you will do your best. Now, based on the latest tax law, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, um, what, what happened is this. People are no longer needed to contribute or not needed to contribute, but people are no longer have the same motivation as before. Why? Because the standard deduction doubled. The standard deduction went up. Before, people, they used to contribute, donate to charities. Why? Because as you make your donation, you can get that value deducted on your tax return. But since the standard deduction is doubled, they basically doubled the standard deduction. So basically, they're giving you the deduction with or without your contribution. And so it remains to be seen if there's any change in the donation overall. This is the first year. We're going to wait several years until we find out if that policy did change the consumer or the citizen's behavior uh, in donating. It's interesting, but we'll find out later. Okay. Also, um, the organization could receive land, building, and equipment as donation in addition to material. Again, they are reported at fair value. The donation it could be considered contribution, basically, if you receive a building or a land and you're going to sell it, or it could be considered support if you're going to be using that land or building for your own operation. And that's going to be reported on the statements of activities. And it will either be classified as without donor restriction. It means you can do whatever you want with it, with the proceeds or with the, with the asset that you receive, or with donor or with donor restriction on the financial report. Now, bear in mind, once you put that asset to use, it becomes unrestricted. So donor restrictions are assumed to have expired once the asset is placed in service, unless the donor restriction limit the use of the asset for a specific period of time or for a specific purpose. But generally speaking, once you put that asset to use, well, guess what? It, it's no longer restricted. It's unrestricted without restriction. Also, if you, if you received reduced rent, what does that mean? Let's assume the organization is renting an office or a floor in a building, and generally speaking, the rent is $5,000, but because you're the not-for-profit, they're giving you the rent for $3,500. So they have a discount of $1,500. The discount is basically, in a sense, a contribution. Uh, special events, what are special events? Special events are fundraising activities that provide direct benefit to those attending. The contribution to attend exceed the cost, obviously, of the direct benefit provided resulting in the contribution revenue. So basically, you would, you would, uh, you would, the nonprofit will have an event and people will attend the event. They will pay money to attend the event and the expense is less. Obviously, if the expense is more, why would you do it, right? So what are some, uh, some examples will be spaghetti dinners, dances, golf outing, bazaars, card parties, fashion shows, 
bingo, bake sales are typical special events. For example, I I belong to a church in Eastern Pennsylvania, and every year they do actually they do many things. They do a lot of dinners, they do bingo event, and I used to work with those dinners and bingo event when I was living there. I'm no longer living in the area, but every year they also have a big a festival where thousands literally thousands and thousands of people would would attend and this is the 42nd annual actually if you're interested you could still attend august 3rd and 4th what they do is they have children activities you can uh, there's um live music and dancing food so on and so forth so this is basically what's considered a special event so revenue from special event must be reported at gross with direct expenses provided the benefit reported separately so basically you have revenues coming in and the expenses are reported the, 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 the expenses are reported separately okay now if the special event is peripheral or incidental basically it means it happens once a year and for example this event happened once a year versus the dinners spaghetti dinners they practically they do them on a weekly or a monthly basis they're not for profit um, to the not-for-profit, the direct expenses can be netted against the revenue. So if it's a special event, basically a peripheral, a peripheral means it happens once once in a year, you can net them. Okay. Special event gross revenue include the fair value of the benefit received by the donor plus any amount received from the donor and access to the fair value of the benefit, benefit received. For example, you bought a meal and the meal is, let's assume the meal is $6. And what you did is you paid $10 for the meal. Why? Because you wanted to contribute to the church, you paid an extra $4, okay? So that extra $4 is access, is access to the benefit of the meal, okay? So what happened under those circumstances? Well, the, the not-for-profit may elect to report only the fair value of the benefit received by the donor as special revenue, and the remainder would report it as a separate line. So they would report $6 for special revenue and $4 at other revenue. In a sense, it's like a tip or you know you just wanted to contribute but it's more than the fair value of the benefit that you are receiving if desired the not-for-profit can provide more detailed reporting of the special event either on the face of the financial statements or in the notes the cost of promoting and conducting the special event and you could have a lot of cost uh, printing tickets posters mailing fees and expenses so on and so forth salaries to employees all these expenses are reported as a fundraising expense and are not charged against the special event revenue so you would report them separate one more topic we're going to go over and that's contribution of assets involving intermediary what's an intermediary it's in between it's in between now we want to think back to the one we talked about the agent and a trustee in a governmental accounting similar to an agent or a trustee an intermediary serves in a fiduciary capacity by helping the transfer of assets between the node the donor and the beneficiary generally speaking the agent will recognize an asset and a liability so simply put let's assume someone donated money to the church and the church is supposed to hold the money so this is the church supposed to hold the money and give it to another organization to feed the poor so what you did, so you, you contribute the money to the church, but the church is going to hold the money. So let's assume it's $100. The church will debit cash 100 with credit some sort of a liability, 100. Then once they transfer the money, they will debit the liability and they will credit cash. They will debit the liability and they credit cash. So this is if they are working in the in an intermediary capacity. So there's, you know, they give the money because you you go through your church and your church gives the money to another organization okay this is what it is now if the agent or the intermediate intermediary let's assume the church is interrelated to benefit to the to the benny organization let's assume the church has what's called variance power it means it can influence how it can influence it has some some sort of a net asset relationship with them or maybe the presidents and the officers on both on both boards are the same then in that situation and because of that you can influence their decision then you would consider it as a revenue because if that's the case if you have any interrelated um, financially interrelated uh, relationship then guess what you and that organizations are the same in those circumstances you report it as a revenue okay so how do we determine if, if it's financially interrelated one of the entities has the ability to influence the operating and financial decision again think about the board is the board of the church and board of the feeding the poor are the same and one of the entities has an ongoing economic interest in the net asset of the other or feeding the poor 
relies heavily on the church. Therefore, they have an economic interest in them. In a sense, there is. In a sense, it's a subsidiary. Or they have a variance power, exists when the agent has the ability to redirect the asset that received to an entity other than the Benny. So what you did is you gave it to the church. You told them, give, give it to this organization to feed the poor. Well, if you have the right to give it to some other organization rather than feeding the poor, you want to give it another education that educate the poor. Well, if that's the case, you have that variance power. So they told you, give it to the poor, but you can do anything with it. Guess what? If you can do anything with it besides giving, giving it to feeding the poor, then you have a variance power. Therefore, it's revenue to you. If you have any questions about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.